All right. So I'm going to pick up where we left off talking about um, wave solutions, solutions to the wave equation in Rn, especially in R3 and R2. And if I have time, I might get to uh, talking about the heat equation, just introducing the heat equation. So remember the general wave equation is given by uh, the second time derivative is equal to C squared times Laplacian. We're going to focus on the unbounded spatial domain in Rn. And just like in our one dimensional case, we're going to have some initial displacement of the medium. This could be um, an, an elastic sheet, for instance, and an initial velocity. And I'm going to refer to this as asterisk. Okay. And building off of last time, I'm going to use a little bit more detail to derive a more precise result. And I'm going to adjust my notation a little bit from last lecture. Okay, just so that it's clear. So, um, so V is going to be our spherical mean solution, taking on a sphere um, centered at X with a radius R. Okay, so V is parameterized by R and um, and t, right? And, uh, and it's also given by x, which is the center of that sphere. And so we're integrating this over these spherical shells, as we mentioned. Uh, but just to denote that it's boundary, I'm going to put that, that curly d there. OK. So just to kind of do this all in one fell swoop, um, if you look at the notes uh, that are posted online, I think I deal with a special case of this. This will be a more general proof okay, than is given in my handwritten notes that are posted online. So let's say um, U is some solution to that uh, initial value problem. Then for X, living in Rn, okay, V, X, R, T is going to be C2. It's just going to be defined radially. Okay, so we're as assuming that we're freezing X and then this would be like R and T here. Uh, this solves the it's called the Euler Poisson Darbo equation. Okay, it's just three three people that developed this result or contributed to it. You'd imagine Poisson would because it involves a Poisson like operator, Laplacian. Okay, so um, V uh, is, it's parameterized by X now, right? And its variables will say are R and T. So it has a PDE in R and T, and this is defined on um, R goes from zero to infinity and T is greater than zero, okay? V of X, R zero is going to be equal to the spherical shell average over phi of y ds y v sub t x r zero is the spherical shell average of the initial velocity, right? So psi y ds y, and this is all on 
R goes from zero to infinity. Okay, so this is the Euler Poisson Darbo equation. Okay, the reason this is helpful is that we can actually solve this equation and then back out what uh, u needs to be. Okay, so let's start off by showing more fully why we should expect v to satisfy this equation, doing a lot more work than I um, did on Wednesday. Okay, so, so, <clears throat> So right, so we're going to start with our um, with an assumption that v is regular, okay? Just that it has the smoothness that we re require, and we can show this because if we compute v now, this is in general for any n. Okay, then the surface area of the sphere, right, in Rn is given by this equation, okay, scaling by um, the surface integral that we compute over our sphere surface, okay, and uh, we can make a change of variables such that uh, we're just looking over ds from zero to one, okay? Where now the argument is gonna be x plus r times some xi t ds xi, okay? And so what did I do here? Well, I just said, let's, let's make a change of variables. Y is equal to X plus R Xi, okay? And I, and I removed the uh, dependence of X and R from the boundary and I, and I put it inside, okay? And then alpha of N is gonna be pi to the N over two gamma of n over two plus one, okay? So this is the gamma function, okay? And that's just the factor that allows us to compute that uh, surface area for scaling our, um, our integral, right? Because we want it to be an average, okay? Now remember, this is an integral over the, uh, the shell, so I can use a divergence theorem, right, to turn that into a volume integral, okay? So thus, if I just compute uh, c squared and I differentiate that integral with respect to r, then I'm gonna get c squared, again, the line integral d or sorry, the integral over the shell, the gradient of u x plus r xi, t dotted with xi, d s xi, okay? I can rewrite this as, this is equal to c squared, the integral, of ds xr, the gradient of uy, and now y minus x over r dsy, okay? So now what is this whole thing here? But this is the normal derivative, right? Because this is the normal out of the sphere, right? And then this is the gradient. So I can write this as c squared, the integral over the shell, ds xr, du d normal, okay, just a bit of vector calculus there, dsy, okay. And uh, furthermore, I can uh, pull out, let's just pull out that scaling factor that I wrote down before. So I have c squared, and alpha n r to the n minus one, 
integral over my shell du dn y t ds y. Okay. Now, what do you think we're going to do? Well, we're going to apply the divergence theorem. Okay. That's a million dollar theorem in PDE, comes up all over the place. So if we do that, we'll end up with a volume integral, right? And lo and behold, we get a Laplacian, right? When we apply divergence theorem, when we go back from a surface integral to a um, to the volume integral okay so that's a volume integral but look i got a c squared laplacian of u let's just take a step back what's that equal to well it's just equal to u sub t t All right so i can use that to rewrite this as okay, the same prefactor here now the integral over the volume u t t y t d y okay great so now i'm integrating over the sphere volume okay and i'm getting close right so remember what i had written down before i mean the thing that i had written down was c squared v sub r x r t okay and the result that I have is that it's equal to this quantity over here. Okay. So if I want to do some um, more manipulation, what I can do is uh, let's multiply this through by uh, r to the n minus one. So I'm just going to I'm going to fit that in, right? So. I have a c squared, and then let's multiply through by r to the n minus one just to get rid of that part there. So I end up with one over n alpha n integral over s r u t t dy. Fine. Okay. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this with respect to r. So I get c squared r to the n minus one, v r r. Okay, why am I doing that? We'll see. So, um, so what I can do, right, I'm gonna do a couple things in this step. First of all, I'm gonna put that differentiation of r there. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert the integral over this spherical shell, or sorry, the spherical volume, right, into basically successive um, integrals over spherical shells that I then integrate over. Okay, so I have some, you know, parameterized sphere uh, radius here that I'm going to integrate over. So this is equivalent to integrating over a spherical shell, and then integrating that spherical shell radius from zero up to r, okay? Why do that? Okay, well, it turns out that then I can much more easily take that derivative just by applying fundamental theorem of calculus, right? So I end up with um, just the integral of ds x r u t t y t d s y. Okay. And what is this thing? Okay. Well, it's actually just the uh, spherical shell average of a u t t, which would be v t t, right? So this is equal to r to the n minus one, just v t t. Okay, so what do I have? I have that c squared r to the n minus one, or now I have c squared r to the n minus one v sub r differentiated with respect to r is equal to this. Well, now I'm almost to the point of having a PDE for v. Okay, that's right where I want to be. So 
that was the whole point of this. So I have c squared r to the n minus one, v sub r r plus c squared times n minus one times r to the n minus two. This is me just expanding out this derivative here, right? This is equal to r to the n minus one, v sub t t, okay? So in other words, right, v sub t t minus c squared, v sub r r minus c squared, n minus one over r, v sub r is equal to zero, okay? And I can obtain the initial conditions by integration, okay? ICs obtained by integration, okay? So remember, what are the, the initial conditions? They're just given by like this, right? Like this. Okay, so I can get that result just by performing the integral that I said it was. Okay, the hard part was getting down to this PDE here. That took about a page and a half of work. Okay, now we have that PDE. So what? Well, that PDE is easier to solve than the original PDE. So that's great. So let's see what happens, right? In particular, I'm going to focus on the n equal three case. Okay, and v sub t t minus c squared v sub r r minus c squared two over r v sub r equals zero. Again, for r greater than zero, t greater than zero. Let's write out. E and its initial conditions. And then we have VTX R zero is equal to DSXR psi of Y DS one. Great. Okay, and these are, these are defined on, on R greater than zero, okay? So essentially, for any X that lives in R3, what, what this theorem just told us, right, that we just, that we just proved, or you know, this, this claim essentially, is that basically this works for, for any X in Rn, right? There's an equivalent PDE, right? for V, the spherical shell average at that point. And so um, let's now define then something I'll call WXRT, okay? And I'm just gonna scale V by R, okay? So that I have a slightly cleaner P, okay? Well then W X R R, what's that equal to? Well it's just V plus R V R, right? By the product rule, differentiated with respect to R, or V R plus V R plus R V sub R R, or just um, R V R R plus two VR, okay? W sub T T is equal to R V T T, okay? Which is equal to uh, C squared two V R. plus R V R R, okay? According to our, um, according to our PD, right? 
So it's just me taking this PD, right? Moving that to the other side and multiplying through by R. Okay. But what what I what do I know about this quantity? Well, this quantity is represented by this, which is just WRR. Okay. So therefore, WTTX is equal to C squared WRRX. Right. And this is true. Where? Well, it's true for any x in R3, for any r greater than zero, for any t greater than zero. And furthermore, I can get some initial conditions, right? Wr of zero is equal to r multiplied by these initial conditions in v, right? So just R, let's call it R uh, phi bar X of R, okay? And then in a similar way, I can write down W sub T R zero is equal to just R times something I'll call phi bar X of R. So I don't have to keep writing, you know, that whole thing out, right? So that's my, Phi bar x of r, okay? Sorry, psi bar x of r. And this is my phi bar x of r. Okay? So uh, this then requires evenness of phi bar x and psi x, okay? Um, and as a result, then we get oddness of R phi bar x, R psi bar x, because it's just an odd times an even function. R is an, an odd function, right? And so, um, so we get we get evenness because you know this is this is over a, a, a spherical shell here, okay, and um, and and so uh, we just we're just picking up the the symmetry of the sphere. Hence, by odd extension, W X R T, right, should be equal to what? Well, remember. What we have here is just a wave equation, right? So that should have D'Alembert's solution on a quarter plane written all over it, right? This is the initial condition, right, that we have here. So we just essentially port the result over for the uh, quarter plane, right? Where we, where we would solve this on the half plane where we just odd extend this, um, this initial condition, right? So the idea here is that, you know, I only know the solution along R greater than zero, okay? But, I could write down an equivalent problem involving R less than zero, where essentially I have, um, I have the negative of this initial condition and this initial condition extending back this way, okay? So that means what I'm gonna write down now, it's gonna look a lot like D'Alembert's solution, R plus CT, phi bar, x of r plus ct, okay? But now I'm gonna have a, a minus, okay? ct minus r phi bar x ct minus r, right? Plus a half
get you the one over two C integral C T minus R up to R plus C T S times psi X of S D S. And this is for the region on uh, R is between zero and CT. Okay. And so we can therefore recover right on the, um, we can recover the solution for U. U of X T is going to be equal to the limit as r goes to zero from above of v of x rt which is equal to the limit as r goes to zero from above of wx rt over r which is equal to uh, the derivative with respect to t of t times phi bar x plus t psi bar x, okay? So in other words, right, u of x t is equal to the derivative with respect to t of t times the spherical mean Evaluated just at CT because I took the limit as R goes to zero plus T times the spherical mean of the uh, initial velocity. Okay. So I, I just divided, right? I divided this solution by R and took a limit as R goes to zero, okay? And that's what the, as a result, I have to take a, um, I have to take a, um, a derivative in that case, okay? Um, and I think one thing else, we should not have the term C word in that case. Okay, so, so our result then, right, is in 3D, I can write down this solution, okay? And it essentially depends only on the data on the spherical shell, okay, ds x c t, okay, and we can use this to work out solutions in R two, okay. So that's our solution um, in R three, okay.